So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome you all to the Ann Bancroft Foundation open house, virtual open house. We're gonna get started with some remarks from our executive director, Sarah. Thanks, Donnie. And I know um, there are a few more people who may pop in uh, as we go through this, but um, we should get started to be respectful of time. And uh, as people come in, we'll just add them into the conversation. So I wanna welcome you. This is our first ever virtual open house. This is something new uh, for ABF, but um, my name is Sarah Fenlison. I'm the executive director of the organization, and I'm really excited to be doing things in new and different ways. There are some familiar names on our registration list, but in case you're someone who's new to ABF, I wanted to share our mission statement because we do everything um, by following our mission statement. The Ann Bancroft Foundation inspires and encourages girls to imagine something bigger. We strive to build confidence and offer tools that will allow a girl to go after her dream and feel supported along the way. Through grants, mentorship, and ongoing development opportunities, ABF is giving Minnesota girls strength to achieve their full potential. And we've been doing this since 1997. We've awarded nearly $2 million to almost 5,000 girls around the state. And I actually like to say that the grants we provide to girls are as diverse as the dreams of the girls themselves. Doesn't matter to us if a girl is thinking she wants to play AAU basketball to pursue a career at the WNBA, or she wants to go to scrubs camp because she's thinking about medical school, or she wants to tour historically black colleges and universities to think about what her future might hold. Um, if this is something that will help to advance a girl's dream, we will fund it. And I haven't heard us say no to anything yet. So that's been kind of fun. But in the pandemic, um, almost all of these activities, as you probably all know, have either been canceled or postponed. And we have had to think really hard about how to develop what I called earlier those ongoing development opportunities, ways that we can provide critical programming for girls, um, given that those activities don't exist right now. So this has been a little bit of a silver lining for us because we have developed a series of webinars and information sessions and networking panels. This this open house is simply the first of several uh, events that we're putting together over the summer in an effort to provide critical programming to girls. Um, and the silver lining is also that it allows us to expand our reach. For instance, I know at least one of you is from up in the Duluth area, and we are working very hard to be uh, operating on a statewide level. And by doing this virtually, we have a greater reach. So I'm not sure where each of you is from, but this is exciting for us. And I need to take a moment to thank Donnie, um, who's facilitating us today for organizing this. And I don't know how many of you know this, but Donnie joined us on March 9th. And it has been an intense first few weeks on the job, because I don't think this is what any of us saw coming when she started. So um, we couldn't be in better hands, and I'm thrilled to have you here. Um, Donnie, thank you, and the floor is as it is, is yours, so. Thank you so much for those remarks and for your introduction. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna kick over the microphone to Jenny to talk a little bit about housekeeping before we get into our content for this program. Thank you, hi, I'm Jenny Lagandino. Um, if you'll just keep yourself muted um, while we're having this conversation, if you have any questions or wanna make any comments, if you'll use that chat feature at the bottom of your screen, there's a toolbar and in the middle there's a chat button and it'll open up uh, a sidebar where you can type your uh, questions or comments at the bottom. And um, if they're in the midst of our conversation, we'll go ahead and answer those, but there'll be a Q&A at the end as well. And if you have any follow-up questions, there's Donnie's uh, email address and we'll be sure that you um, have that at the end as well. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. And now we're going to do uh, more formal introductions. So you've already heard from Sarah, who's our executive director. And I'll start with asking Sarah to, to share how long she's been with ABF. Um, and then we can introduce the rest of the staff. Yeah, I joined ABF, um, now it's actually been six years, and sometimes it feels much longer, and sometimes it feels much shorter, like that was yesterday. But I'm the first executive director, uh, and it has been some of the most rewarding work I've ever done. 
Thank you, Sarah. And I guess I should formally introduce myself. I am Donnie Belcher and I am the newest team member here at ABF. I started in March, one week before the stay at home orders um, here in Minnesota. And I am the program director here and I am responsible for managing our grants as well as our programming here at ABF. So I've been the person who you've been receiving emails from. So it's great to see your faces and to connect um, your names and thank you for being here. And now we can go to Rupa. Hi, uh, my name is Rupa Ryan Kreiser and I've been part of the ABF team since late January. So I was just getting comfortable and then we were all sent home. <laughs> um, I am the ABF marketing and operations assistant. So um, a lot of the communications, uh, that's me pressing the send button. Um, yeah, that's me. Thank you, Rupa. Now we'll go to Jenny and end with Jennifer. Hi, Jenny Lagandino again. Um, I've been working as a consultant for the Anne Bancroft Foundation since late January. So like Rupa, I was just getting comfortable when we all had to go home. Um, but I've been helping out uh, a lot with the annual celebration, uh, some granting uh, research and writing and reporting, and, uh, and then other various projects, um, development and otherwise. Thanks, Jenny. And I am Jennifer Ariola. I am the development and events manager, which means I do the fundraising and um, organize the events that we have here at ABF. And this is my, I started three years ago in 2017, just three days before the big annual event that year. So um, it's been an exciting ride ever since. Thank you, Jennifer. And so now we're going to move into our conversation. For today, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and we're hoping that this part of this discussion will actually be interactive. So we're gonna share and then we're gonna open up the floor for questions um, and for responses. So the first question that we're gonna talk about is what have you enjoyed about working from home? And to get the conversation started, I can start and I, I wanna share just three things. So number one, being able to be at home with my dog all day has been wonderful. Um, I have a four-year-old miniature dachshund who runs my life. And so being able to be at home with her has been great. And then unlimited snacks. I don't know how, how, positive, <laughs> how positive that is, but needless to say, being about 10 feet from my kitchen has been really enjoyable. Um, and then I'll end with being able to dress down. Um, I actually realized that I didn't have enough like leisure clothes because I've been able to, you know, dress down, which is really, really nice. And we can go to anyone on the team who wants to share. What have you enjoyed about working from home? Oh, I'll jump in. Um, I would say I enjoyed having the company of my adult daughter who's working from home and uh, her cat, Thurgood Marshall. Uh, they've been wonderful office companions. Um, it's, uh, it's been interesting. Um, I would say probably the toughest thing might be kind of drawing that line between what's work time and what's home time. Um, and I miss my team at ABF. So uh, while well, there's been some good things, um, it's, uh, it's a challenge, but one I'm willing to embrace. Thank you so much, Jenny. And it, I see Sarah is ready to share. Sarah? Well, I was just going to say, we've actually all discovered that we, we all like pets. Um, and, and I think we actually all have pets. And for sure, my dogs and cat have been pretty darn happy to have me home. And I will agree snacks are good, but I, I actually had thought ahead. I, I actually like making a nice lunch and I do not do that when I'm at the office, so. Thank you. And we can go to Jennifer now, or Jenny, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, well, I am a mom to a three-year-old. 
So uh, while that's been challenging being here, it's also been really nice. The commute's great. <laughs> I don't have to drive very far. Um, so I get to see her for lunch, which I normally wouldn't get to do. And I'm home really quickly at the end of the day. So um, that's been a big plus. I also have a, an old cat. So it's been nice to have her in my lap every now and then while I'm working. Um, and also just, you know, being able to get out in the neighborhood uh, for a few minutes a few times a day, which I um, don't usually do at work. You sometimes forget about the time and you just sit at your desk. So it's, that's been nice too, to just be out outside a little bit more often. Thank you. And Rupa? Um, well, with a deep sense of gratitude, um, I have really enjoyed working in uh, my home, which is a very peaceful environment. Um, we have awesome windows in our apartment. So I've been enjoying the bright light um, in the early mornings. And uh, my wife is an incredible cook. So uh, Carly's Cafe is open for many hours during the day. And I'm very happy about that. Awesome. Thank you. And I wanted to open up the floor um, just in case anyone is interested in sharing what you are enjoying about working from home or going to school from home for those who are not working right now. And you're welcome to unmute yourself for that part. <laughs> yes. Hey everybody, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. My name is Janelle, and one of the things that I've most loved about being at home is like really starting my garden and being out with nature and in my backyard and enjoying the space that we do have as a family. Um, there are four kids here, so that's been very <laughs> interesting to say the least. And um, they're all at different levels in their educational platform. So it's just been interesting trying to navigate all of those successfully <laughs> being home uh but yes being in my garden and you know going on bike rides and just enjoying nature has been really really awesome thank you for sharing that Janelle and um we definitely as a team love nature um sometimes you know we host meetings someone's outside you know which is nice so thank you for that reminder um is there anyone else who wants to share before we I'll share. I can share. Uh, um, I'm from Duluth, so my name is Stephanie, and I'm really excited to be here today. So good afternoon to everyone. Um, I love that I get to spend time with my 10-year-old dachshunds, so, um, and they do take up a lot of my time, Marty and Maddie, um, and I think just enjoying my walks with my spouse. Um, we have been all over Duluth, so it's been kind of fun, and then meeting my neighbors, which I've noticed has been a little different. I have, I've lived here for quite some time and haven't met my neighbors in like 15 years, so it's been nice to meet them finally, and just make some new friends. So it's been, yeah, that's been, that's been the, the positives for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And I have to say, we have um, a pretty big presence in Duluth. And so Stephanie, thank you for all of your work um, in making that happen. And if anyone else is on the call from Duluth, please let us know so that we can get you connected. Um, and then anyone else wanna share? No, no pressure. This isn't a thing where everyone has to share, but we certainly wanted to open up the floor um, if anyone is, wants to share. And I'll give it a couple of seconds. In. I see you waving. There we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. My name's Michelle, and I am from Chicago. Um, and I just want to check out everything that you guys are doing. You guys are blessed to have Donnie on your team, and she's just amazing. Um, something I like to share about me being at home, um, I'm working remotely, so my multi-tasking um, skills have gone up tremendously. Um, being able to work without having students walking in every five minutes, I'm getting a whole lot of more work done every day. Um, and I have uh, a chance to spend time with my two uh, adult daughters and my um, grandson and my Yorkie. Oh. So, I'm doing a lot of stuff with those guys. 
Oh, and the most important thing is if I need something from the store and they have it at Target and I see it, I can just shoot out and go get it. So that's the most important thing. Thank you so much for sharing, Michelle. And um, before, I'm from Minnesota, but before moving here um, back home, I lived in Chicago for 17 years and worked with Michelle. She's the founder of a nonprofit called John Walt Foundation. And um, just want to thank her for being here and hope everything is going well with the foundation. I got a little watery eye. Um, thank you. So now we're going to move on to our second question. And if you want to share, you know, from the first question, you can just type in the chat and Jenny will, will get the, will, will get it and share it with the group. So the second question is actually, um, Jennifer already raised this, but how are you navigating the challenges of working from home? And for me, I would definitely say staying focused has been a challenge. Um, just because there's so much to do at home, there aren't as many distractions when we're at the office. And I've navigated that challenge by setting, basically creating like a weekly to-do list and a daily to-do list. And so having that list to refer to throughout the day, every single day, keeps me um, focused on what I need to accomplish for the day. Whereas when I'm in the off, when I was in the office, it was a little bit easier to do that without the list, just because of the, you know, being in the office, you have a different mood and a different kind of vibe. And so, yeah, list making has been my saving grace to make sure that I get everything done that I need to get done. And I will bump it over to Jenny to share. Sure. Um, I agree with the uh, pulling your focus for sure <laughs> when you're working from home. Um, and also with a three-year-old, I know there are some people on the call with more kids than that, but even one is a little challenging. Um, <clears throat> so that's been a challenge navigating that. Um, but luckily I have, um, you know, my husband's home too. So he's able to watch her and I, while I work and vice versa. So that's, it's nice to have that support. Um, and I guess the other thing that's just, uh, that I just miss is agree. I agree with Jennifer. I just miss being with my coworkers. <laughs> They're pretty cool people. And, um, it's just, it's a bummer not to get to hang out with them every day and, um, see their faces and, and, uh, you know, all those, all those, uh, physical things that we're all missing right now. Thank you, Jenny. Rupa, what would you say are challenges you're navigating working from home? Uh, well, definitely echo uh, missing my coworkers. Um, I think, you know, I was just settling into a routine at work and then Donnie just joined the team and we felt really solid. And then um, it, you know, it changed overnight. Um, I'm also a full-time grad student. And so um, I went from a little bit of sitting throughout the day to a lot of sitting. And my team knows that I've said many times that I have a body that needs to move. Um, and so um, just trying to figure out how to break up all that sitting time. And I also really, um, I really honor the importance of transitions. So like my commute is a transition, <laughs> telling me that one thing is over and another thing is about to begin. And so um, all of that just took a while to shake out into a routine. Um, but once I got the routine going, I felt a lot better. Thank you. And Rupa, Rupa always shares really helpful movement tips for the team. And I uh, just have to shout her out for that because it is easy to sit, you know, for hours and hours. A lot of, a lot of people are experiencing virtual or virtual fatigue or screen fatigue. Um, and some of those strategies, Rupa, that you shared really helped. So thank you. Now we can go to Jennifer and we'll end with Sarah and then we'll open it up. Well, I guess I prematurely <laughs> shared some of the things that I'm finding challenging, but um, like I said, it's just, uh, we have to work really hard on making that divide between work and home. Um, you know, I've gotten used to the view from my, my kitchen island, but, um, you know, when the living room's just four steps away, uh, it is hard not to get distracted and then it's hard not to um, think, oh, it's seven o'clock at night and my laptop's just sitting there. I'm going to take care of this work thing. 
Um, so it's uh, it's been a challenge, but on the flip side, I've enjoyed learning how to adapt and um, be flexible uh, and try new ways of doing things like this virtual town hall. Thank you, Jennifer and Sarah. Challenges for you. Well, I I infinitely prefer to have the team together. Um, I like the energy of our team. I like being with people uh, and just because we can do some things from home doesn't mean it's how I would still choose to do them from home. So one of the things we've done is we have a, um, and I love that we actually all on the team brought this up, but we have a, a every week we do a Zoom lunch um, because there's a million meetings in a week and I, I get to see people in meetings, but the Zoom lunch is purely social. Just hang out, everybody eat lunch. And um, I kind of hold on to that as a little bit of bonding time. Um, I also find all of the sitting really, really hard uh, and have not found a solution to that yet, probably because I'm simply not disciplined enough. But um, those have been the biggest challenges for me so far. Thank you so much for sharing, um, everyone, and for being so open um, about the challenges that you're experiencing. I want to open it up now to the larger group to see if anyone wants to share challenges that you're navigating. Hi, uh, I'm Basha. I am from Chicago. I am too working remotely. Um, I work for a nonprofit, Sky Art, and um, that I agree with all of the challenges you all have said. Um, one of the challenges that I know that was really hard for me was like to stop creating an expectation for what the week would look like um, because the pandemic is constantly changing. Um, I too started my job in mid-January and so it was just getting the lay of the land and everything changed. Um, and then that first week it was like, okay, this is pretty chaotic. I'll expect this to be chaotic the next week. And then it was kind of mellow. And then, you know, the next week will be totally different. So, and then it's along with the focuses and just how you feel too. Um, and being okay with those emotions. I know for myself, I was, I was living in this mindset of like, all right, the pandemic or the, the shelter in place will be over on April 30th. And then they hit us with the news that it will be another 30 days. And I just did not mentally handle that that well because I had this expectation of like, okay, I'm going to end this whole routine and go back into the office. So I've just really been um, focusing on making sure that, you know, be flexible in my schedule and what to expect for the week. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and it's interesting, a lot of uh, people on this call started work in early 2020 in January. Um, so it's interesting to hear similar experiences about coping with and handling um, the pandemic. I, I joked with Sarah shortly after I started, nothing like a crisis to let you know who people truly are, <laughs> you know. Um, so now we're going to, oh, I'm sorry, did anyone else want to share? We only had one person. I always want to open up the floor if other people have comments. Can I react to what Basha said? Yes. Am I pronouncing your name right, Basha? I, I feel like I'm a person who has a really hard time with change. And um, the first few weeks were just mentally and emotionally draining for me because of exactly what you described. Every week was different. And there was a point at which I realized I had said, you know, I'd like to do this in 10 days if it's still possible. And it was, and I realized it became possible to plan again. Doesn't mean we're on the other side. And I know there are a lot more waves of insecurity and likely crisis yet to come as we go through wave after wave of this. But I was surprised at how much relief I felt when I was able to actually set a plan and execute a goal. <laughs> yeah. um, that was really hard. Yeah, ah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And just checking in before we keep going to see if there's any other comments about challenges. Okay, so now we're going to transition into the conversation about volunteer opportunities with ABF. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that one of my colleagues can share her screen. 
and Rupa, if you want to share your screen and take it over from here. Yes. Okay. Now we also have a few people joining us that were that are new. So hello to everyone who just joined us. We're currently transitioning into the conversation about volunteer opportunities. If you missed the beginning of the call, we're actually recording, so you will be able to watch everything that you missed. Um, so in my short time in the office, I've only encountered a few volunteers, um, but they've been really, really helpful with, um, we've had a couple of people come in and check inventory for some of our apparel and um, sort files. And it's kind of like, it's this, it's, I, I call them mindless activities, not because, you know, anybody can do them, but like there was one woman who came in, she was the head of a crisis nursery. And so for her to come in and be able to sort papers, she was like, wow, this is so relaxing. Um, so it just gives your brain a break from your normal routine. And I'm sharing my screen so I can show you where we can find um, all the ABF opportunities. This is the homepage, so just annbancroftfoundation.org. Um, you'll go to Get Involved, Volunteer, and this is going to show you all the opportunities, um, for everything from committees you can join to uh, a single event opportunity. Um, the tab that you'll probably utilize the most is the second one. Um, I have to move all of you so I can see it. There we go. Um, volunteer, because this is where you'll see all the different opportunities that we have. So um, you can click on the first tab. There's several opportunities here and a little description for each. And I'll go back. And here's our application process, which will take you to a separate page. And then once we get your application, um, we'll let you know that you can go ahead and sign up on Sign Up Genius. And these will be updated. This all reflects um, the annual celebration as it was on April 22nd. Um, nope, excuse me, for um, the, the first um, rescheduled events. This does not reflect the virtual event that is taking place in June, um, but I'm going to update that next week. So just so you know that this is where they are housed. And I will stop my screen share and um, I will type those into the chat so you can easily find that. And we will also include a link to that page, to the sign-up page, in the follow-up email that we send about this event. Um, I also wanted to check in to see if Jennifer wanted to share um, the types of opportunities that we may have available for our annual celebration. So that event will be taking place on June 18th, and it is a virtual event. And I will turn over the floor to Jennifer. Thank you very much, Donnie. And I'm going to do a quick little screen share uh, as well. Um, one of, well, in this, in this new, brave new world, we have um, flipped to a virtual event. Usually we have a big event for 500 people in April. Um, and at first we thought that by June, we would be able to see 500 friends again. But as we now know, um, it will be a virtual event. And it's actually very exciting to, um, try new technologies and see, you know, what are, what are our options? It's, um, so we will be streaming the event. Um, right now, if you're on the ABF homepage, you can just click on the event and you'll find out all the information. Um, because it's not in person, we'll have fewer event um, volunteer opportunities, but we still do have a, some uh, post event. Uh, we do thank you calling the day after the event. Um, we're going to have to uh, organize all of our auction purchases and we'll have a couple of pickup days and so we'll need volunteers to help us with that. Um, we might have a few people that need things delivered. Um, so that will be updated, uh, as Rupa said, um, on the Sign Up Genius, but just so that you know, 
The place to find All Things Event is on our event page. Um, it is a free event and we're encouraging everybody to invite all their friends. If you had bought a ticket or a table at the in-person event, we'd be kind of limited. Right now we can invite everybody, people from all over the state, from all over the country, can participate in our event and learn more about ABF. Um, one of the things that you can volunteer to do is share the word, um, tune in, uh, ask your friends to tune in. We have opportunities if you wanted to become, uh, set up your own fundraising page, you can volunteer to do that. On our champions page, uh, we just open that up. Um, and those are the opportunities for the event. We're also inviting um, some of our trailblazers to be a part of the event by recording um, a little thank you or holding up a thank you sign and also giving us um, their testimonials. Uh, trailblazers, parents, mentors, um, because people want to hear the impact that their um, donations and their support on ABF have. So we have opportunities. Um, I know Stephanie's mentored um, trailblazers before, so this will be a great chance um, for you to share your ABF story and to encourage your, uh, your mentees to do so as well. Um, but yeah, so join us on June 18th. Um, keep checking in here because we'll have all the information here as it comes. We're working on creating a really fun interactive event where we've got girls and women trivia. We've got a fun bingo card that Donnie's working on. Um, and even though you're at home and we're in a studio, um, everybody that's going to be there is going to be able to participate and be interactive. And while it's not being in, it's not like being in person, um, we want everybody who is interested um, to either tune in to support us or tune in to learn more about ABF because there'll be some great stories and some great sharing. Thank you so much, um, Jennifer, for sharing all of those details. And so now what we can do is we wanna take questions. So if you have questions about how we're navigating COVID-19 as a team, if you have questions about the work that we do and the, the impact that we intend to make, um, every day, or if you have questions just about the foundation in general, um, we're all available to answer those questions. So uh, you can type them in the chat. Um, Jen Jenny is monitoring that, or you can also just ask the question um, like we've been doing. Questions? I'm gonna jump in because I saw Stephanie ask that question um, as part of a pre-question. So the event, we're gonna do a, a cocktail uh, half hour uh, at 6.30 on the 18th, and then the program will kick off at seven. We will keep it to 45 minutes or less, we promise. Um, although we'll let the auction stay open uh, and opportunities for engaging until, I think we've said nine. Um, but don't quote me on that because it's still all being built as you can imagine. <laughs> and I know a couple of people are on from Chicago and we're in the same time zone, but just for clarity, it'll be 6.30 p.m. CST if you're tuning in from somewhere outside of the Midwest right now. Okay, and then I think we have a few, a couple of other pre-questions. Jenny, did you want to share? Yeah. Um, Stephanie also asked, how can we help our students prepare for the next grant cycle? So that is a wonderful question. I can start and then if I leave anything out, um, team, please fill, fill in the details. So we are going to host an info session before the next application cycle. Um, hopefully we can do it face to face, but if we can't, it will be virtually very similar to what's happening now. Um, other than that, the key to, you know, a successful grant application is definitely being able to articulate what exactly it is that you want to do. Um, and we have, you know, two, currently two funding areas. There's the Let Me Play grant and there's the Dare to Dream grant. Um, so just make sure that you're aware of, you know, what those grant funding opportunities are and then being able to articulate why it's important. Um, and helping your mentee to articulate that. Um, and then I'll just open it up because uh, for those who are new to the call, I just started March 9th. So I haven't actually gone through a, gr a grant cycle yet. Um, so I'll let the rest of the team answer that. 
Well, and given the uncertainty of all this, and I see another question coming in from someone in the chat about how we're shifting as well. But um, Stephanie, I, so we did not have our spring grant cycle for those of you who are new to ABF, because the fact of the matter is that the, the activities that girls would have pursued were simply not available. And actually one of the first things that Donnie learned when she started, she started getting calls from people who got grants last fall because their program was being canceled or delayed. And one of the first things that Donnie had to do was work with our granting co-chairs to develop a COVID-19 policy. So for those girls who got grants, but at this point haven't been able to use them, and we're doing some volunteer, having some volunteers make calls to understand the extent of that situation, we're standing by the awards. And we are saying that we will support the girls to use those grants going forward. And um, even if they have sort of technically aged out, like you're supposed to use your grant by the time you graduate from high school, we're not gonna hold that. We're gonna allow for this award to go forward. And I think that in her follow-up, um, Donnie, maybe you could also share that COVID-19 policy that we put together so that if you're aware of anyone who's worried, Donnie got a couple of calls and clearly there were people afraid that the money was gonna to have to be returned. I suspect we're not getting all the calls that are out there and that's why we're gonna initiate calls so that we can spread good news to girls who got grants and might be afraid they won't be able to use them. Um, Stephanie, in terms of the fall or for any of you, um, it is, you know, we all know there's still a lot of uncertainty. I had to do a, a budget forecast based on assumptions and so uh, I made an assumption, and my assumption was that we would be able to have a fall grant cycle on our usual timeline, which would mean an application deadline of October 1st, that would be notified in late November with grant awards in December for activities through the winter or in the spring. And only time will tell if that is in fact the case. And if it turns out that there is some special turnaround and we could do some granting sooner, that would be a wonderful thing to respond to. But for now, I'm assuming it would be that timeline and we'll have to see what happens. Um, that might be enough on Stephanie's question, although I know there are some others out there. Yeah. Any other questions about um, granting or Stephanie, if you have follow-up questions? Um, I did have one question. You had mentioned that potentially there would be an informational Zoom meeting. Um, is that something that we would be able to share? Is that something that like a student could attend if we shared that? Or I can share that with the rest of St. Louis County with all of our people that, um, is that, is that something that we can do if that, if that happens or? Thank you um, for that follow up and absolutely. Okay. Um, so this also connects to volunteer opportunities, but we have an outreach committee and we will be meeting um, in mid to late summer, largely to talk about what's um, going to happen with the fall grant cycle. Um, and when that information session happens, we absolutely want mentors, activity providers, um, girls, you know, all of our audiences to participate. Um, so for those who are new to ABF, we, with our, our grant applications, girls can apply in partnership with a mentor in order to fund a specific activity. And so, um, you know, our audiences include girls who are residents in the state of Minnesota. It includes their mentors who work with them on completing the application. And then um, the activity provider is um, where the funding goes, if you will, if that makes, if hopefully that, that makes sense. And so all of those audiences will will be invited to join us for the info session. Other questions? I just wanna make sure Susie, that we answered your question. She, she also um, you know, asked about the opportunity, how opportunities for girls have changed due to COVID-19. And really earlier in the, uh, before I think before you logged in, we talked about some new uh, ongoing development opportunities that we're doing as well for trailblazers. Um, yeah. Donnie, yes, did you? Thank you. That was, that, I, yeah. my question is answered. I'm okay. very sorry I had to come late. No, no, that's great. Great. I just wanted to make sure that you got all the info you needed. 
Well, Susie, we your, are? Hands are, your hands are very full. I've, I sit in about three calls a week that you um, facilitate. So uh, I, when, I actually feel a little pressure to live up to your standards on this. <laughs> it's really great to be here with all of you. Thanks, Susie. But I want to jump in, and, and Donnie, this is, this is your session, but Donnie came in at like a magical time because um, we are known for the granting we do. We have done granting every year since our founding, but we have harbored a dream to provide these ongoing learning opportunities. And it has been a challenge for us to help our donors see why we would do anything other than granting, <laughs> because granting is so easy to talk about. Now, um, I'm disappointed that we couldn't grant this spring, and this should not in any way be misconstrued. We will return to granting. But in response to this situation, Donnie has put together, um, there's going to be a first Imagine What's Next in Marketing on June 2nd, and it's going to be a webinar. And our brand partner at Clarity Coverdale Fury is providing that with a number of people from their creative team. And it's the kind of thing you could easily see adapting, and it's a career exploration. Imagine what's next healthcare. Imagine what's next um, applying for college. Imagine what's next, um, the legal profession. It could be anything. And I actually imagine a number of our board members or their companies or our sponsor companies would want to be a part of this. Um, and the interesting thing about this is it's opportunity that deepens our support of girls who've already gotten grants. It's the first time that we're really offering something to our alumni our trailblazers because we are an organization where you can get one grant then what and i would say that the one grant we provide um, it is a life-changing experience to apply for the grant because a girl is challenged by her mentor to start dreaming and not every girl has that in her life so the act of dreaming and i've watched stephanie scores i've watched you do this just challenging girls to say um, you know, what is your dream? And then, you know, between here and there, what is it going to take to achieve that dream? And I see our grants as the support that makes that path possible. <laughs> it's not the only thing. Um, so we are going to use this pandemic time to pivot, to develop new programming, to pilot those programs and uh, evaluate their value and impact in the lives of girls so that going forward we have a more diverse portfolio of programs if you will donnie i didn't mean to steal your thunder no that was excellent that thank you that was excellent <laughs> and i would add that um you know we fund uh activities for girls around the state of minnesota so the opportunity um in how we are pivoting is that we can now connect um, more directly to girls around the state. Whereas, you know, if we do programming here in the Twin Cities where we're headquartered, um, it, it provides access limitations. So we're really, really excited about, you know, when you think about Stephanie, what's happening in Duluth, we've talked about, you know, doing regional programming. You know, we've talked about, so this, this um, was a response to a crisis and certainly uh, something that we didn't anticipate having to deal with so quickly. But what we're finding is that it's it's actually a great tool for being able to connect to girls um, and to our peer organizations, et cetera, that are outside of the city. Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, if if there are no questions, you can always follow up via email um, and we'll follow up as well, kind of with next steps. Uh, as a reminder, June 2nd, we are hosting Imagine What's Next Marketing. Um, and you don't have, you know, this is a virtual event, so you can participate from anywhere in the world. So that's June 2nd at 4 p.m. And then on June 18th, we are hosting our annual celebration virtually. The start time for that is 6.30 p.m. CST. Um, and you can sign up for that on our website, um, but we'll also send you an email about that. And then we're gonna have a summer of programming. Um, and so look out, um, we'll add you to our email list. Um, if you don't wanna be added, please just email me and I will make sure that we don't. But we're gonna add you to our email list and we're gonna have a summer of 
of these ongoing development opportunities for girls. Um, and so, you know, share those opportunities with the, the young women and the girls in your life. Um, we didn't mention this, but we have um, a little over 5,000 what we call ABF trailblazers. We've been, you know, in existence since 1997, and we have a huge alumni community. But as we think about programming, we're, we're not only thinking about our 5,000 plus alumni, we're thinking about girls in general, and we want to um, connect to them whether or not they have a grant from us or not. So team, is there anything else that we want to share before we wrap up our first virtual open house? I would say just thank you to everybody who was here. And I know a couple of people stopped in late. And um, as Donnie mentioned before, this session is recorded. So um, she will make that available so that uh, you can see what we talked about. Um, but I just think it's, uh, I just love that people are interested in what we're doing and uh, want to keep up with what's happening here. Um, as I said before, in both relating to the event and what Donnie said, um, you know, there's a little silver lining to all of this in that it has allowed us to accelerate some things that were on our dream list. And it has also provided us with the opportunity to try new things um, that we may not have done otherwise. So um, thanks for being here. Thanks for um, following ABF. I also want to say, make sure you're following us on social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter and LinkedIn. And we're currently sharing resources uh, for girls and you know, their families. If you go on our website, I actually think this is worth doing a screen share for. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. I have a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> so let me go to my internet here. You go to ambancroftfoundation.org and you click uh, this link here, this, the blue about COVID-19 and it will lead you to this resource page. Um, you can click whichever audience you're interested in um, and it will lead you to a list of resources that are updated pretty regularly thanks to um, Rupa who you heard from earlier. Also, if you are aware of opportunities or resources that may be relevant to girls and their families, please email them while we do our best to research. We understand that we, you know, we don't have access to all of the resources and information that is available out there. So you can just email that um, to us and then we can include it on our website as well as our social media. And I will stop my screen share. Sarah, did you have any final? I want to thank you all. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is new to us, but it's fun. And I have, I have to confess, been a little inspired by you, Susie, and how things have gone um, over at the Council of Foundations. But uh, I can't imagine going through this pandemic uh, 20 years ago and what it would have been like or going through it in the dead of winter when we couldn't get outside. But getting to see everybody's faces and hear from you if you know someone who's gotten a grant or hearing your ideas about what might be meaningful and valuable for girls as they strive to develop confidence and self-esteem. I feel really fortunate to have all of this technology at our disposal and to have your support in the work that we're doing. So thank you for being part of our afternoon.